have any opening statements or we just want to go with questions? Yeah, let's go with questions. All right, hit it up, guys. Go ahead. Gail, your, your 16th season, uh, do you think it's flown by for you? And, and uh, is, it, is this experience, this journey for you, been everything you thought it would be and, and could be so far? Uh, yeah, 16th season, wow, yeah. Uh, I didn't realize it was, it was that many, but yeah, it goes fast. Every year is, uh, flies by, off season flies by. So, um, and to us, it's just, just go get it, do our best every day. And, you know, those days obviously uh, fly by and um, here we are, we're about to start another season. So, um, yeah, everything's been great. Um, super uh, just grateful to be at Penn State and with the people that we work with every day and, and uh, the community's been awesome. Um, but yeah, you know, I uh, just got nothing but, but good, good memories and just looking forward to making more. How much are you looking forward to this season? How much? Yeah. Uh, a lot, I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah, we're, you know, every season's kind of the same for us. We just are excited to see where we are and then just build from there. Right. We have a lot of, uh, uh, just great kids, uh, great human beings. That, um, so yeah, we just we'll see where we're at, and then we'll uh, we'll just keep getting better and be at our best in in the big moments. Looks like your starters are probably pretty much settled at most weights, but can you shed any light on if there's been any wrestle offs or any leaders at thirty three, fifty seven, or ninety seven? Um, yeah, I mean, we've, we've had a round of uh, wrestle-offs, but, you know, we'll use the, the preseason and these early matches and, and, and tournaments just to kind of, you know, make sure uh, and get everything set. So, yeah, the next couple months uh, will give us a pretty good idea who our guys are. But, you know, it's, we still have, uh, I was just talking to one of our kids, I mean, the Nationals are still five months out. So, you know, we got, we got some time to, to figure things out and grow and, and learn and uh, keep making sp- uh, small steps and progress. How, how difficult is it that freshmen are coming in more prepared than what they have in the past that makes it difficult for you guys as coaches to, you know, maybe decide that starting lineup and things like that or the red shirting process? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think you're right. I think it has changed. I mean, I think, you know, kids are just more prepared to jump in right away. And, and uh, there's enough examples that they, <laughs> Uh, want to follow suit and so you're pretty much for the most part wrestling your best team I think now every every year and if a kid gets the opportunity and they're ready to to go and they earn the spot then um, it's up to them still I mean there's still going to be kids that want a red shirt um, but but yeah I mean kids have access to uh, RTCs at a young age and uh, you know just incredible technique and coaching and um, and they're ready. Yeah, they're ready to go. You know, high level uh, competition. Um, so, so yeah. I don't know if it makes things uh, more difficult for us, but it's uh, it just you know a, a change that's uh, just part of college wrestling now. Okay, Levi Haynes is vacating that 157 pound spot. Is it safe to say that Tyler Kasak is going to take over? What is the plan for 157 pounds? Well, that's you know one of those weights that's uh, going to be more competitive for us. Um, Alex Facundo's uh, looking really good at the weight. Uh, obviously, Kasak uh, as well, and um, so that's uh, you know that's going to be one of our more competitive weights that we'll we'll have to figure out uh, you know who who's going to be the the starter there that. And when that when that gets determined, um, yeah, uh, you'll know when I know. Probably kind of a deal. Deal yeah, with uh, with Braden Davis uh, bumping up this year. Uh, where does that leave things for Aaron to go? Um, well, actually, Aaron was injured in the off season. If if you guys weren't aware of that, so he's he's still kind of rehabbing and getting back um, um, to full strength. And uh, but yeah, yeah, thirty three was a. You know, uh, another every weight is is competitive now. I mean, we just have a lot of a lot of good kids that uh, believe in themselves and are going to compete hard. You know, 33 uh, has a, a has a handful of uh, of guys, and I think uh, initially uh, Davis has definitely kind of jumped out as that as that front runner. <clears throat> you 
when you look at some of the weight, uh, obviously with him going up, um, Haynes goes up, Sirachi goes up, what went into some of that decision making process? Was it all just body related and those guys were ready for a different weight class or can you walk us through the decisions to settle on the weights those guys did? Yeah, you know, we we, uh, we let our, our guys kind of make those decisions and, uh, you know, the first year, two years ago when Levi was going to go 57, I, I was... And I saw him the summer before, and I was like, "Wow, that's going to be that's going to be a difficult uh, move for him." And and then he's just disciplined enough, and uh, does everything right that he made it work. And then I think the next summer, I was like, well, there's no way he's going to make 57 again. And then sure enough, he was extremely disciplined and followed uh, uh, the game plan like to a T, and was able to obviously wrestle great and feel great and and be healthy. And uh, so, yeah, I don't think it, uh, you know, he's got a big frame. And, and uh, so when he was ready to go up, he's, he's kind of ready to go up. And, and uh, that's something that, you know, not something that we get too involved in. I mean, we're, we're trying to help each individual and figure out what's in their best interest. Um, so we're obviously going to guide them and help them as much or uh, as little as they want. Uh, Carter, I think he's also a guy who just... Uh, <coughs> has been at 74 well he's won four national titles at 174 right um but it's getting tougher and tougher for him to you know keep that get that weight down there and um, i like the idea of him just going and competing and making uh weight management less of a you know a factor in his his week so um so yeah and we, we've had a lot of success with our guys going up over the years and uh, it's a you know there's a lot a lot of wrestling and you know, if our kids can feel good enough to focus on improving every day instead of trying to manage their weight, it's just, uh, I think it's a, it's a better plan if, if that's possible. If it isn't possible, then you know, we make the most of it and, and, uh, and that's what we'll do. Okay, well, arguably um, Carter's last season could, there, I mean, there's some comparisons that could be made to your last season in that there are a lot of expectations. He's going for um, a goal that's not been attained before, much like you did, is, more of his challenge, mental, and just maintaining expectations and all of that as because of his physical? Well, I think it can be. I, th I think it's kind of the challenge for everybody because regardless of your circumstances, whether you're first or second or third string or, you know, redshirting or whatever, I mean, our just our own imaginations will kind of create um, expectations and we add pressure to ourselves. Um, but, yeah, I think with uh, a guy like, like Carter, He's just a competitor, right? And um, he's uh, he's confident, and and you know he he's not going out there trying to um, you know sneak by with wins. So he's you know, he's always looking uh, to to the bigger picture. I mean, his goal is to you know obviously have a great year this year, and then get ready for the Olympics and World Championships. So you know I think the process of improvement never really ends, and um, so I don't think you'll see a shift in his mindset of, you know, trying to, trying to hold on to something or trying to not lose or whatever, that kind of mentality, uh, which is so common in, in sports. But, but yeah, I mean, those are things that we'll do our best to, I mean, it's the same thing for everybody, same thing with coaches, same thing for the freshmen. You know, everybody has uh, expectations and, and how you deal with them is uh, part of the, the fun challenge of college sports. Kale, how has the wrestling room as a whole adjusted with key figures David Taylor, of course, leaving big absence there. How's the wrestling room digested that and handled it to this point? Yeah, uh, our room and the culture and the energy is has really never been better. You know, it's been uh, we have an outstanding group of, of kids. You know, we hate to see our guys that come through our program leave, but that's just part of life, right? And you know, in the future, we're going to have other superstar guys leave. We've had uh, superstar guys leave prior. Right, and uh, you never like to see your your guys leave, but you know that's uh, kind of what we are, are trying to help our kids do: is come here, let's help you reach your goals, and then when the time's right, you're going to move into the next phase of your life and go kick some butt there. So, uh, but yeah, everything uh, you know, it's been a, it's been a really productive, positive off season for us. You know, we don't um, get out and talk, and you know, we don't do the hype thing and all that kind of stuff, but. Uh, you know, the addition of Nick Lee has been really an outstanding hire for us. He's he's done a really nice job. We were able to hire, uh, you know, Clay Stedman as, as, our, uh, as our GM. It's what we're calling him now, and he's done an awesome job with all the changes in college athletics. So, yeah, we've, uh, we've been blessed to be able to kind of really elevate our program in the last, last six months, and, you know, that's 
just what we're going to keep doing. What do you expect from Lilo at all? Uh, Lilo at all? He's, he's just going to compete. He's a competitor. He uh, has a lot of experience. Just a really good person. I mean, we love competing with him. He's, um, you know, he's the guy that loves to, to train and loves to improve and uh, has a great mindset. He'll be a really good uh, influence on the team and, you know, his, his teammates, obviously. Uh, but yeah, he's, uh, you know, he is as uh, described and as everyone's following him the last few years, I'm sure. Um, he's, he's, he's going to be, he's going to be a lot of fun. Can you, can you fill us in uh, with Greg? Um, obviously, he was supposed to wrestle on Saturday night, and now he's, he's not going to, and things like that. So yeah, like yeah, Greg's stuff. fine. I think people were concerned if he was injured or something. I think you know, they just try to get those kids to sign up for that event uh, a long time in advance, and I think he just had some things come up. But yeah, he's he's good to go. He was, you know, the plan is he's wrestling Sunday, so just had some things on on Saturday that I think some family things that he wanted to participate in, and so. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he's he's good to go. Is Lilladol the guy at 125, or is there another open competition there? Yeah, I mean, every at this point, every weight's an open competition. Um, you know, I mean, Kurt McHenry's done a really good job to get healthy, and and uh, you know, he's he's looking really good also. Um, but yeah, that's one of those you know weight class like every weight class is you know we'll uh, it's you know we'll use the next uh, month or so to kind of figure out what the what the plan is there. It's a process, you know with the scholarship limit and all, but, but you think this might be the deepest team you've ever had? You know, that, that week by week, that place? Um, we'll find out. You know, I mean, it's it's always easy to speculate and talk about the way things are, but um, that's completely different than, you know, how we show up and compete and, and how things play out during the season. But yeah, we have a, we have a strong team. You know, we, uh, we're we happy with where we're at and, you know, we, we still, as coaches, um, believe our best years are ahead of us. and best years are still ahead for Penn, Penn State wrestling. That's that's our job. That's what we're excited about. Um, but yeah, we're really excited about the, the group of uh, student athletes we have uh, in the program right now. Are you, are you looking ahead to the uh, change in the scholarship allocation limit and stuff? I mean, obviously you are, but can you talk a little bit about um, what you're thinking about with that? The yeah, uh, the change. there's a lot of changes and, you know, we kind of find out uh, the same time everyone else does. You know, you read an article about things changing you're like oh, okay well you know so we just kind of go with the flow and uh you know i think any any changes are probably good for our program and uh penn state wrestling um you know we're not going to have 30 scholarships right but i've seen that floated out there i mean there might be a few programs that have 30 scholarships but unfortunately the real the reality for most especially male olympic sports is you know they're probably going to move backwards in the support that they have and that, that stuff. Um, but, you know, I think as a sport, we'll figure it out and, and we'll, uh, we'll keep getting better and keep uh, producing people that are going to go out and do big things in, in the world, right? Um, but, yeah, uh, we just kind of go with the flow and, and you know, we're going to take care of our guys and, and we're going to compete in, in all aspects of, uh, you know, in all aspects that we're allowed to compete in, right? So um, we're not going to uh, take a back seat in, in, in any way. I mean, we're going to, um, really work our work our butts off to make sure our kids have uh, the reasonable and awesome opportunities to uh, take advantage of all these uh, these changes. In that regard, how come Clay was the right guy to sort of be in that role as your general manager? Um, well, Clay's if if you are familiar with his history, he was the guy who uh, he was here when we first got here, right? And he uh, just was one of those bigger than life guys, you know, very professional. Um, you know, he's very successful outside of after he left the program. You know, I tell our guys, he was uh, my first year, you know, our coach, our staff's first year here at Penn State. He was our 97 pounder and, and he had a really bad uh, neck and back. He actually got hurt in a car accident in high school. And uh, it was, it was, it was, it was tough for him. And then his senior year, the trainers and doctors finally said, hey, Clay, it's just not worth it. We're not going to let you wrestle anymore. And, uh, and that was really hard for Clay. And he was a guy who, he still weighed in every way in, and he had a hard time making weight. He's a, he's a big guy, and uh, and he would beg me to put him in the lineup. And you know, I think that's a pretty special thing. And I say, Clay, you know, we love your passion, your fire. You know, you know, we can't put you out there um, because most of the time, if you ask a kid that's not planning on wrestling in the dual meet, hey, you got to make weight uh, just in case, or you know, there's a chance you wrestle. 
there's not a lot of kids that are always right there ready to go. Where this guy couldn't wrestle, knew he couldn't wrestle, still, um, maybe he was trying to get me in trouble actually, now I think back on that. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's the kind of guy Clay is, but he's just a very personable, um, just a, as honest as you can be. Uh, he lifts people up. You know, the other thing I, I tell uh, people about Clay was, I mean, the, I think the first 10 years uh, after we got here, he was everybody's best man. You go to a wedding of a wrestler and, and there's Clay as the best man again. You're like, what's going on with this guy? You know, so he's just that kind of guy, just a big personality. Um, and he, he brings a lot of positivity, uh, very smart. You know, he's, he's a hustler, um, works really hard, um, understands the sport. Uh, obviously, he's an alumni and uh, he's done an outstanding job for us so far. At 197, it looks like Josh Barr, one of your contenders there. Is this kind of a, a temporary move for him while Carter does his last year, or is he the kind of kid that's going to grow into that and, and might not be able to go back down to 84? Yeah, I, I actually don't really answer to that. I've wondered the same thing, because I think his plan was be 84, and he could have gone either weight, but he's a big, strong kid. He works hard. He's really disciplined. I think he's the kind of guy that's disciplined and tough enough that he could go down or go up. But he's he's not going to be a small 97 pounder. I mean, he's a, he, he's uh, he's definitely jump jump levels. I would say in the last uh, few months. But yeah, that's a that's a very competitive weight for us as well, right? You have Lucas Cochran in there, who's done a really uh, great job for the program over the years. Has a lot of experience. Um, you know, we have the Mirasola brothers too, but they're you know, Cole is wrestling heavyweight, Connor's 97, but those guys are probably uh, just a shoe in rush uh, to redshirt, just uh, with, with the, the way the program is and wouldn't make sense to wrestle those guys. But um, but yeah, um, Josh Barr's done an awesome job. He's very committed, very dedicated, obviously very skilled and technical and tough wrestler. Is, is the idea of maybe those guys that are wrestling Saturday won't be in line maybe Sunday just to kind of not really up so far yeah it looks like uh the majority of them will not be wrestling sunday that will be in the all-star match i mean uh i think there's a couple of them that are considering it um but i think their focus right now is uh the all-star match and then if something changes you know obviously they're on weight um, but i mean they're wrestling some of the best guys in the country so you know we, we want them to focus on that match i mean it doesn't count on your record whatever but i mean if you're a competitor every match obviously counts and you want to go wrestle uh well and kind of set the tone and get things going but um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, we're gonna uh, we have we have a lot of lot of uh, really uh, tough and able-bodied uh, kids that are ready to jump in there if, if the opportunities uh, present uh, present itself. <clears throat> You're interested to see how your five guys compete this Saturday, you know, against the good competition, and, and also, um, <laughs> you know, are you pleased with the all-star format? The fact that you had it back for a second year, just the way. You yeah, it's it's easier for us if if we. Um, have it here, then we don't have to travel. You know, a couple of years ago, I think it was in Texas, whatever, but it's nice for us to have it here. It gives our, our fans another um, opportunity to wrestle and, and be here at Rec Hall. And, um, and yeah, I, I don't get too caught up and worried about the results. I mean, I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, it's, it's just, we're gonna keep getting better whether we wrestle great or not, right? And, and so, of course, we always wanna wrestle great and that's the plan and we're prepared to wrestle great, but, um, at the same time, you know, each match is going to come and go really, really fast, and then we're going to be on to the next one. So, you know, we want to keep that the long-term mindset uh, in place and just be prepared um, because you know we're going to be competing for the national title in March. So that's ultimately what we're preparing for. Yeah. Do you say? Go ahead. How has Shane um, come back from surgery? Has he looked good in the room? Yeah, yeah, he's been going. Um, he's wrestling on, on Saturday in the All-Star match. And uh, he's just, he's Shane, he's just, a, you know, he, he's a, he applies a lot of pressure and moving forward, he's gonna wrestle tough. Uh, he, he, uh, he just learns and um, continues to uh, improve in all areas. Hasn't been on the mat uh, in a long time, but uh, he looks, he's looking really good. We're excited to get him back in the lineup. How much, uh, how much has Mitchell take what he's learned internationally and has evolved into? You know, with you guys now in this success that he's had most recently? Yeah, I think Mitch is, uh, he, he loves to compete. He's very consistent. I mean, you see him in practice, he's bringing the same fire and energy. Um, and so, yeah, anytime you, you, you wrestle and you push yourself and challenge yourself, I mean, he did really well in the Olympic team trials here in, what, April, whenever it was, and then just took third in the U20 World Championships. Um, I think he's just, uh, with his mindset and his, uh, 
his competitiveness, he's going to keep getting better. So yeah, we're excited. I mean, he's, I know he's, uh, he's a lot of fun to watch and people are probably um, looking forward to seeing him do his thing. When it comes to the makeup of your non-conference schedule, why was Wyoming a team you targeted to bring here at Rec Hall? And then why did you guys want to go to the collegiate wrestling duels down in Nashville? Um, you just try to switch things up, right? You try to wrestle different opponents and, um, and, and, and you also kind of wrestle who you can get to come in and wrestle you too, you know? So it's just kind of a, a combination of things. And, um, but yeah, we're excited to wrestle Wyoming. They have, uh, you know, Coach Branch has done a great job out there. They have some really good guys and uh, give us a chance to get, get our guys out West again next year, which is something that we've tried to do um, in the past. Um, the collegiate duels is, is uh, yeah, I, I, we didn't go to that last year, I think uh, because of the, the Olympic trials and there was a, a qualifier right before or whatever, but, but yeah, that's uh, the format is, is great for us. We're going to get three really good matches, I think. And, and right before the Christmas break, which seems to be uh, a, a pretty, pretty good plan for us. So yeah, that's, uh, and you know, you just got to get, you got to get matches and, and uh, if you can wrestle people, they aren't going to wrestle three or four times that year. That's even, that's, that's more fun. So you will do home and home with Wyoming? I think so. I think so. I think so. I should know more about a program, um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, there's some things I focus on and some things I don't worry too much about, but I, th I think we are going out to Wyoming next year, yeah. Kale, uh, you're doing two uh, Jordan Center dual meets this year. Um, yeah. Can you talk about why? Um... Uh, they're just big duels and uh, gives you know more fans a chance to go compete. I think it's great practice for our student athletes to wrestle in the you know, up on a stage and, you know, get that feel for what it's going to be like at the, the national tournament. So um, I think it's a win-win, you know, it's, uh, you know, those those matches bring in obviously more revenue because there's more fans uh, and it's a great, uh, great environment for us. I mean, we love Rec Hall, it's just a little small, right? And it's tough to get in here. So, you know, if you're wrestling those big duels, they'll um, just, just the same kind of philosophy that, that we've had, um, you know, for years. Uh, over there. How have you seen Mitchell Messenbrink improve? What's impressed you the most about him in terms of his development now with, with another year in the program? Yeah, I think he is, uh, I think a lot of focus for him for folk style has just been Matt wrestling, right? Because if you re recall from last year, he's a buzzsaw on his feet. So people want to slow him down and kind of take some time off the clock. And so he's got to be able to get away from people and and kind of uh, just be himself. So he, he's put a lot of effort and time in, into the mat wrestling stuff. And, uh, but he's, uh, I mean, he's just, he's a unique character, right? I mean, he's just, he, he's, he just keeps working, keeps working, has a very positive mindset and mentality. And um, he's really grateful to be at Penn State, which, you know, is always uh, makes our jobs more fun. But yeah, he's been, uh, He's been, he's been a good one for us. How have you seen him handle that, that finals match now that it's all settled in? Yeah, I think he's fine. You know, I, it, you know any loss is tough, especially when you're as competitive uh, as he is. But, uh, you know, win or lose, you're, we're, we're looking forward to the next event, right? And the, the next uh, season, the next national tournament. So, you know, we don't get too caught up in uh, any, you know, any match. I mean, you know, tough losses are the ones that usually, uh, you know, not, not that a guy like Mitchell needs any motivation, but sometimes those those tough losses are, the, you know, the, uh, end up being huge blessings for us. And very rarely do they not, you know, if you if you approach it with the right attitude. So, yeah, it, it hasn't even been uh, really. I don't think a second thought. I mean, we haven't we haven't thought a lot about it. I mean, it was tough, and you know, but we're moving on. And he, he rebounded right away and went and made the uh, the national team at the Olympic trials, and you know, it's won a world medal since then. So, um, yeah, it's all. Everything works out for our good if you just keep a good, positive attitude. You guys, time for two more. You guys obviously are. Um, you guys don't focus your energy on things you shouldn't focus on, things like that. So, um, how is it that you know at the tail end of this year that nationals are going to be in Philadelphia, and you know they were in Pittsburgh, you know, five years ago now. So, how do you kind of not get too far ahead, but still know that that's there? Yeah, you know, I think that's cool um, that it's in Philly, <laughs> but again, like. We don't really think about that stuff, you know, because um, it's kind of like the saying, like, we don't care where the ballroom is. We just like to dance kind of a thing. So to us, it's all the same thing, um, you know, but when you're looking back, yeah, it's special to be 
in in Philly and to have won the Nationals in Philly was awesome. Um, you know, to have won the Nationals in Pittsburgh was awesome. And, you know, we hope we can get as many of our fans there uh, and alumni and, and supporters as possible. Um, but we've also sh also seen that the, the NCAA tournaments on the East Coast are like the most difficult ticket to get, which is, uh, I think that's a good sign for our sport. And, uh, and it's kind of challenged maybe some of what we thought or what people thought uh, prior to this uh, this time so um, but yeah yeah being in Philly that's great um, but yeah we're wherever wherever the tournament is it's it's kind of the same to us one more well, I guess we'll get to talk to him in a minute but for Bo what have you seen from his offseason uh, kind of get it this year oh uh, well Bo's one of those uh, consistency guys right he's just the same person all the time and um, those are the guys that get better and those are the guys that are the easiest to coach and, and support um, but yeah I think he's uh, he's will continue to jump levels and he has jump levels and uh, the big thing is just same with all of our guys is just wrestling with enthusiasm right and, and gratitude and um, let's just go score some points and make our opponents never want to wrestle us again all right all right great all right cool. thank you Kale. thank you